Yeah, good day. This is Deborah Peters, and this is the part two of a webinar series with my friend and colleague, Rigo Martinez from Insperities. Say good morning. Yeah. And um, today we have a new panelist. So his name is Christos, and I'm going to let you pronounce your last name. Last name is Criticos. Criticos. I like that. I like it. Christos Criticos. Very cool. Very cool. Clearly he's Greek. <laughs> right? What makes you say that? I have no idea. Um, so today's webinar is all about a way through. Last week, we got into a little bit about, you know, and please keep in mind, these these tools I'm teaching you are, are just right now, they're just scratching the surface because there's a lot of depth to them, but obviously in a webinar such as this, there's really no time to dig into them. However, one thing I know about how the human mind fires is when you start introducing new concepts to your mind, to your brain firing, um, it fires differently and it starts to entertain these new concepts. So that's why we decided to do a series because with a series, we can give you more tools and you can start to embrace some of these. And then, you know, there's always ways of getting more information and we've got some courses and stuff we can talk about. But point being is right here today, we're going to get into actually finding a way through and I'm not talking about survival. I'm talking about thriving, right? Go big or go home. <laughs> so why would you just want to survive? So Christos is with, uh, has his own company called Emerging Humanity, and he's based in New York City. And I'll tell you a little bit about him once we get going through. So let me set the tone. First and foremost, I would like to say that if you can please be with us for 75 minutes today, I think that's probably a good idea because if we're done in 60, then great. Um, and, but we wouldn't mind having a little bit of extra time to get some Q and A done today, which we didn't really have time for last time. All right. So, Today is, I'm giving you five keys today, and these are really big keys. So I want you to start to look at this pandemic as being the, the pivot point that you made the choice, you made the decision to make this your greatest life ever. I, I feel that, you know, we've all been through hard times and it's not the experience that we have that defines us. It's what we do with the experience that defines us. And so when we have something this, for lack of a better word, colossal going on, then the biggest and most important thing you can do for yourself is to really use this time as being the moment in your life where you said, I'm going for it on every level from now on. You know, think about this. If, you, if, you, if you're willing to use this as a, as a launching pad, then there's no reason to, um, to, to be in fear because then you're channeling all that energy into what you're creating. And if you're channeling, when you're channeling energy into what you're creating, and there is an absence of fear at that point, you can't focus on fear and creation at the same time. Well, you could if you want to create more fear, but it's not what we're about, right? So once you step into that mindset, that, that reality within yourself, then what happens is you realize that all of those people that you were going to approach about doing business with you, about doing a joint venture with you, about going on a date with you, you know, starting a new way of life, there's no fear anymore 
because you're creating, you're in a place of creation. So that's what we're going to focus on today. And what the point to this is, is I, I would like to introduce you to a concept where you can actually reach into your future and you can create new opportunities that you haven't thought of yet. In, in certain communication models, where you learn how to run your own mind, when you learn how to get control of your thoughts, there's a, a concept that, that introduces you to how you actually store time. So most people store time behind them in terms of the past, and then they store time in terms of the future in front of them. Some people are left to right. And it's our relationship to time that determines uh, how we store our memories and, and how we store our goals in our mind, how we, how we relate to our desired outcomes, to our dreams, to, to how we want to expand ourselves and what it is we want to do with our life and create during our time on this planet. And so today I want to introduce you to a concept that you can actually through a, a strategic planning process you can actually reach into the future and expand your business and expand your company into uncharted territory that you probably would have never even looked at before because you were so comfortable in the way things were ticking along. And so this is your opportunity to start reaching into those possibilities that you would have never given any bandwidth to because you were in a comfort zone and what you were doing was working. You know, I think the biggest, the biggest um, block to a company's ability to grow and become more fulfilling in its delivery and connected to its people and, you know, kind of like the spirit of business is, is when I hear a company leader, a business leader say, well, you know, everything's working good, so we're not gonna fix something that's working good. And my response is always, well, but you don't know what you don't know. And there's so much you haven't even considered yet that are dormant possibilities that could bring a lot of happiness and joy and fulfillment to your organization along with the bottom line, along with the profitability. It's not an either or, it's an and. And I believe that this is where we're headed now is into this new sense of awareness that you don't have to sacrifice happiness, joy, fulfillment, and, and enthusiasm for profitability and meeting your numbers. You don't have to sacrifice that. It really truly, sh it, it should be, and, and this is what we're birthing, it should have been that all along. Because when you look back in history at all of the great entrepreneurs, the captains of industry and all of the people that were the inventors, and you look into their life work, it came from passion. It came from a place of passion. And so this gives us an opportunity right here, right now to get into this place of passion about who we want to be, being before doing, and then take that being into how you scale your business, how you restructure your company, how you pivot your offerings. It all is connected. So, a little bit about me. I talked a little bit about this last time, but for those new people that are on here, I want to give you a little bit of information about me. So um, in the beginning, I was heavily involved in the fitness industry. And through that process, I owned a fitness facility and trained professional athletes. I took that to a whole other level and let it be the impetus for 
studying neuroscience. And so my background is in human engineering, neuroscience, understanding how the brain, the mind, the body, and the results that we get through our actions produce the direction that we head with our life, what fulfills us, what inspires us, and what enables us to grow and expand beyond our current limitations. I was a professional speaker from probably, I think the time I was like five years old, I used to have these cardboard boxes set up in our house. We lived in a cold climate. And so, you know, I'm sure you guys can all relate now because the kids are home from school, right? They're all underfoot. So you've got forts happening with blankets and, you know, very old school. I mean, that's what we used to do. And I used to set up this cardboard box and I had this podium and I would do my speeches to the world from the podium. And so it, it took me to Vancouver, which was my very first delivery was to a company called Sun Life, which is a, a very large um, insurance company. And I, it, it was a hit and I was like, okay, I think I'm on to my passion. And so over the years, I've developed it into coaching and written courses and I have a book coming out and, you know, some, some really great stuff that is going to serve people at this time. So just to give you a little bit of, of uh, awareness on this. So through this whole journey, what I've identified in companies is there's, there are certain commonalities that take place or don't take place or they struggle with that is across the board no matter what country you're in no matter what what nationality you are no matter what language you speak there are there are certain steps and and um what's the word i want to call it choke points that every organization goes through and gets blocked by. So over the last 20 some years, I think the new, um, I think the new politically correct way to say that you're supposed to just say it's been over a decade because you know, then you don't date yourself, but that's all right. So over the last 20 some years, what I've done traveling around the world, 17 countries, coaching, training, and speaking in a wide variety of industries is I've noticed that there are certain elements to a business that have got to be built out and they've got to be embraced and they must be installed as the company grows in order for the organization to remain relevant, to to become sustainable and to scale. And you have to do it in a way that is a gradient that you can handle. Because if you do it too steep of a gradient, you know, companies will implode. If you do it too slow, companies will no longer be relevant. The marketplace will have passed you by. So if you want to go over to my YouTube channel, I threw up a short URL there, a tiny URL there for you. Go on over to my YouTube channel and there's like over 200 free coaching videos. And um, you can jump in there and just to your heart's content. You know, you can teach yourself how to meditate. You can learn how to build out your sales, your revenue, your people. It's all there for you. And we keep adding new content on a constant basis. So uh, just a few things that I've applied this to so that you can maybe have some awareness or, uh, 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 with your own organization and where you want to go. So, you know, partner with John Cabot University in Rome, leadership programs, British Marine. Um, I led a trade mission to Panama from Canada and facilitated a trade agreement between the two countries, worked in the luxury markets. And, you know, NASDAQ, I think I was, I was at NASDAQ last, last year at this time, actually, right, right now. 
um, facilitating a program on mindset, you're going to see some really big things come from NASDAQ. They've really got a strong um, pivot that is in play and um, you're going to see a big, a big growth spurt from NASDAQ and their contribution to the changes that we're going through. Done some programs with Wells Fargo. It was actually Wells Fargo Mortgage, which has dramatically changed. The FBI, um, Cisco, Arco, Kia Motors. So my experience comes from like these large corporations and these government entities down to solopreneurs. And this is a cool thing about what I'm sharing with you today is because you can use it at any size of organization, no matter what your role is, no matter what your uh, level of responsibility is. If, if you're running your own business and you have an assistant, or if you have 10 or 15 employees or 500 employees or 5,000 or 20,000, all of these tools are workable. So I would love to just take a pause, I'm gonna have a drink of water and I'm gonna let Rigo introduce himself. So Rigo is just phenomenal and he specializes in, in employee benefits. And I think there's a lot of questions at the table right now about that. So why don't you introduce yourself and then later on Rigo, I'll have you jump in and do some training. Sure, sure absolutely. All right, well, thanks Deborah. Um, good stuff so far. And yes, um, great to be here and share a little bit of a little bit of some thoughts and some advice here um, from us. And um, like Deborah said last week, it was so great. We decided to just go ahead and just turn this into a little series. And uh, Deborah's wonderful and uh, joining Christos this time around. So looking forward to what he has to share with us. But uh, yeah, really quick, um, Deborah's right. I we used to specialize all in uh, employee benefits and then I kind of transitioned over the last uh, uh, year or so into a much more broader aspect uh, into the whole HR and business solutions model. So basically in a nutshell, what I do is I kind of go in there and help businesses uh, streamline and cost contain their overall processes. Um, and uh, that can include obviously um, employee benefits, um, payroll taxes, uh, payroll itself, um, business processes. So we go in there and, and, and do all that for them. And in doing so, uh, I am privy to a lot of the changes that are happening um, at the higher levels with governments, uh, federally, uh, state and local. And so uh, I kind of get a firsthand uh, look as to the changes that are happening. And uh, as, you can, as you all know right now, just with the new business landscape, um, everything's changing almost on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you know, programs that are out by the government are running out of money or have run out of money. And so it's just kind of keeping all these business owners on edge um, and trying to figure out what their next move is. So we kind of come in and I come in and kind of got to guide them through that. Uh, so that way they're not too stressed out and give them a little peace of mind and push them in the right direction. So uh, that's what I do. And I'm looking forward to sharing just a little bit about uh, some of those changes that are going to be uh, happening here. Um, moving forward. That's exciting. And, and Rigo's a veteran. He was with the Coast Guard. So we got to meet just because I decided to jump on Amtrak and head down to Orange County to a veteran's business happy hour. Yeah. <laughs> we like happy hours. Yeah, I love happy hours. Um, you know, you know what they say, um, success is 80% of success is just showing up, right? So, That's right. and here we are. So thank you. So yeah, we've got some good stuff to share with us as we go through this webinar today. So next on my agenda is Christos. We're gonna hear from Christos as well today. And um, so just kind of give you a little bit of background how I met Christos. When I'm traveling around the world, which has been on pause for a few weeks, um, when I'm traveling around the world, what I like to do when I, when I go into a city and I'm doing a work project, is I like to host little cocktail receptions. And this has always been kind of a, a dream of mine, like how cool would it be to just, you know, have my laptop lifestyle, my team is in different parts of the world and we all meet through Zoom, so this is very comfortable. 
And when I'm in that city, how about I just put it out to my network and make some new connections and host a cocktail reception. So I did that, um, actually I did that in New York in October and um, partnered up with a global organization out of Geneva. And um, we put it out to our list. We had about 101 RSVPs and I think about 75 or 80 people came and Christos was one of them. So now we're working on a program with, to, to train business leaders, basically with what I'm going through with these webinars with you guys. And uh, we'll be doing programs in Greece and we'll be doing programs in Africa. So, so Christos, and well, lots of online stuff, obviously. So Christos, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and then, uh, and then we'll have you on later to, to share some things. Yes, thank you. First of all, great thanks to Deborah for, for the invitation. And it's really, really great to get up close and personal with uh, both of you, Rigo and Deborah, in this virtual space. Um, so my background is uh, in, uh, I have many, many years in technology, in product, in technology solutions, in working with small businesses. And I would say I, my main focus is what it would be an early stage startup nowadays. And my goal is to uh, help them uh, get to, to that funding stage, to like, get the traction, get to the market, work on their product and become fundable. Um, so this is a very rewarding experience nice. for me. I love... Uh, I, I, for me, entrepreneurship is a, a catalyst for economic development. And like Deborah said, we are uh, having a little, uh, we're on a mission to bring that to Greece and Africa and other places as well. So very excited to be here. Thank you. And looking forward to what's coming up. Very cool. Okay, so I think Rigo, there's someone talking to you, Daniel, in um, in chat. So why don't you have a peek over there, and maybe you can get back to him. So send us your questions. Let us know what it is that you would like to, or you need some help with, and definitely, um, who do you want to meet? You know, who can we introduce you to? How can we connect you with uh, with someone? And who can we connect you with? Just let us know. And, you know, we've got some resources. We all have some amazing databases and, and I love connecting people. So it's really good. All right, so here's what I'm covering today. Getting back to basics. It's really important right now that anything that you were kind of letting slide, <laughs> as we do as human beings, because it's human nature, that you dial that in and you get back to some basics. And I'm going to cover that off with you today. Leveraging starting over. It's okay to start over. We have to take the wrongness out of starting over, whether that's your perspective on reality, whether that's your entire business model, whether that's how you take care of your body, whether, you know, whatever it is, it's okay. And you can start over any minute. You don't have to wait a week or wait a day or, or wait till tomorrow. Start over now. Just start over with something that's not working for you and get into a different headspace at the very least. Discipline. So I'm going to be talking with you about a discipline that will enable you to really be super productive working from home. I've been working home from home for, I don't even know how long, like 15 years. I just made a decision to stop going to the office and paying for all of that commute from an energetic perspective where I was just like grinding myself down and stop and go traffic. Los Angeles has a lot of traffic normally and um, what big city doesn't, right? So 
that I'm going to share with you some of those tips because you have to be able to shut it off and you have to be able to give yourself some breathers uh, or else your productivity just goes out the window. You truly, you end up becoming counterproductive. How about this one with working with clients remotely? You know, this was a big mindset shift for me. I used to have this old school model where I would meet with people all the time in physical. And it's, you can only meet with so many people when you're, when you're schlepping through traffic. So this is a great opportunity to learn to build relationships using different mediums such as this. And to take those relationships to a level where they're productive where you can actually achieve something together, working together. And then Rigo's gonna go into the government stimulus and Christos is gonna talk a little bit about, you know, going through this process. So maybe you're already an established company and you're running this established company, but there's something new you wanna branch out. You can treat it like a, start, a startup within your, your organization. There's a lot of that, that's kind of like that's nothing really that new, but it's, it's a trend that's growing and expanding. All right, so never waste a good crisis, as they say. So I couldn't even put that word in there. So this is really a time to take advantage of the space that you have and take advantage of just the, the impulse or the demand or the expectation that you're supposed to be always running, just always running. You know, that hamster wheel thing, paradigm, if you will, is worn, worn out, it's done. You're way more productive. You know, I've been telling people for the last probably five, six, seven years to let go of this notion of multitasking. It's counterproductive. Let your brain focus and then drive it home. All right, so pivoting, this is the key. This is the first key. So this being the greatest opportunity of your life, what is it that you're pivoting on? And maybe you're pivoting on more than one area. So what I would suggest to you is you have to be really gentle with yourself. You know, Keep your expectations in a place where this is not gonna happen overnight. This situation that we're in, where we're on lockdown, where we have limited mobility, I don't think I don't think that's going to just like pop back into the old way. I think this is going to be a longer term process than most of us have been willing to uh, admit to ourselves. So be gentle with yourself, build, and know that as you're building it compounds and eventually you hit that tipping point what was it they said about the beatles like the beatles did when the beatles hit that ten thousandth hour that's when they blew up and you know if you've read malcolm gladwell's book the tipping point that's a really great book probably it's old but you know you can apply it to to right now we have all been through some kind of crisis. You know, 2008 brought the economy to its knees. What's different about this is because this is involving human life. And so the mortality that we all face, whether we want to admit it or not, the mortality that we all face is like, it's in our face and along with it then is the economic hardship that goes along with that. That's also economic potential and economic blessings. I mean, I have, I have some clients that are just like crazy busy right now and they, they're looking for people to hire. So the thing about this is, you know, as we go through personal I want to, I just want to like pause for a second and share something really personal with you instead of this being just all about driving through a bunch of slides with tools so that you can go feel better, you know, and change your life. I really would like to just humanize this whole time that we have together today and share something with you. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm in a family with one of, 
there's three of us, three daughters. And my, my mother did very well when she retired. She retired a multimillionaire. And, you know, it was, it was always discussed that there was going to be a certain level of, of prosperity for each one of us girls that we could then take our lives to the next level. And, you know, it's what families do for each other as they, they kind of launch that next generation of growth and expansion. And so when she passed a few years ago, something very interesting happened besides going through, you know, the normal process of grief when you lose someone. I found out <laughs> at the hospital um, that my sister had changed the will when my mother was in the, the, the facilitated living. And so I was completely rewritten out of the will. And that was a big turning point for me because I had earmarked some money to scale my company and really everything came to a screeching halt. And then there's the feelings of betrayal. And so, you know, human beings were emotionally driven. And when we go through situations such as this, where there's fear and there's anger and, you know, there's even resentment, you know, there's, there's doubt, like this sense of this, the world is coming to an end. I'm never going to be able to move this forward. So I want you to understand that you can take that uncertainty and that fear and that doubt and, you know, you can imagine how angry I was as well. And it was like, am I angry or am I in grief? Like a shock. <laughs> so what are you going to do with that? You know, I could have licked my wounds and felt sorry for myself. I could have, I could have challenged the will. I could have spent a bunch of money on an attorney. And instead I decided to take all of that inner turmoil and turn it into a powerful message and set of tools for people. And I took that energy and I took that drive and I channeled it into helping other people. So being of service, there's nothing more fulfilling than being of service. So take whatever you're experiencing in your life right now, and find a way to express that so that it helps others because everybody's going through some kind of challenge, hardship, pain, emotion, negative thinking, you know, suicides are up beyond measure. So do something that with this that enables you to be of service. Get to work, get to work, get to work. I have to tell you, you know, I've completely, I don't even turn on the television. I tell them if, if you are, if you have a family and you have children, I understand. If you have a television in a second room, that's great. Just stop watching television. Get to work and get disciplined and take that time there are so many other ways to soothe your brain than to sit in front of a television. In fact, what ends up happening that most people aren't aware of, if you think you're going to go sit in front of the television and relaxing and forget about your troubles, they actually percolate in the back on an unconscious level. And so they're still there. And in fact, any negative emotion or, or negative self-talk is going to get triggered by whatever is going on in the program that you're watching. And it's going to get built up even bigger. So if you can maybe start reading some books, if you can do some writing, maybe you want to, you know, order a paint set online. I don't know. I'm just saying whatever comes to my mind that may touch your heart learn to play an instrument, find other ways to channel your energy besides social media, news streams, and television. From a 
internal perspective with your organization, get a solid meeting rhythm in place. I put all of my clients on a daily huddle, five minutes, and you have no excuse because right now, you know, I've excuses I've heard was, well, you know, we're on job sites and we're here, we're there. And it's like, that's what Zoom is for. That's what having a conference call is all about. You can virtually connect from anywhere at any time. Get it into your calendar and get it scheduled as a routine. Then on a weekly basis, have your management discussions, have your bigger picture conversation. I would even say during the day, maybe you need to break the day up into blocks because this is really all about results. It's not just about meeting to meet. It's about demanding results. You, it's really important that whatever key activities you're going through in a given day, that you can measure the results that are coming from those activities. And you want to be able to attach that to something along the lines of growth, uh, something along the lines of revenue, something along the lines of expanding your markets, your relationships. You want to be able to measure what you're doing like tangibly so that you can look back on this time and say, you know, she was right. We took lemons and we made lemonade and this is now the best time for us. Our company grew as a result of this. You have to be accountable to those results. And I think this is a really awesome time to, to let go of justifications. So there's a saying, you know, you can either be, be loved or you can be right. And I, and I always thought it was kind of a crazy saying, like, what does that mean? And what it means is, do you want to be right or, or do you want to, to grow? Do you want to defend your limitations about how hard it is right now? I just, I just got this, uh, marketing email before we jumped on here and it's a company selling sales programs which we all need to have uh, a sales program that we have installed in our business that we know works and is measurable but it was the it was the lead-in line that said sales are really hard now and i said to myself they are first of all no they're not and secondly, that's a fear-based sales pitch. So it was, you know, and I think that's another turning point that we're having in business right now is if you have a heavy sales culture, you're, get, you're learning a new way of selling. And instead of selling the fear of loss, you're, you're, well, maybe you haven't learned it yet, but here's a, something for you to ponder, is start selling the opportunity that comes instead of the fear of the loss. Because people are already so weighed down by fear already. You know, first of all, I think it would be truly unethical to take advantage of that. And secondly, why not do something for them that lifts them up? and show them like, here's the light at the end of the tunnel that we can bring you to using our product and our service. So this is a really, this is, <laughs> you know, right here, this slide, we could just stay right here and this could be our, a pivot point for everybody. Also consider remapping your annual strategic plan. Usually by now anyway, they're, they're kind of getting worn around the edges because this is Q2. So when you're looking at your annual strategic plan for the year, this is a really awesome time to do your quarterly review and then to go into your annual strategic plan and to remap it and to tweak it so that it includes new markets. And these are gonna be markets that you would have never gone into before. So you're gonna, I can see you all starting to be more and more bold, right? You have to be willing to change. If you're holding on to the old way, then 
you're going to be really uncomfortable. You're going to be miserable. You're going to be feeling like you're stuck. So if you're feeling any of that, it's because you're holding on to the old way. And this was the biggest mistake that happened with the financial crash is people were waiting for everything to come back to normal. And I heard that from people's lips so much. I was doing a lot of training in the mortgage industry and that was the big talk. It's like six months from now, things will be, will be back to work. And you know what? A year and a half later, people finally gave up and said, I'm going to go get a new career because it's not going to happen. And it didn't. All right. So be willing to change. Training. This is the training I would like you to start to create or, or get implemented into your organization and in, in this order. So first off, train your mind. Train yourself how to think. Not so much what to think, but how to think because life comes at you as we've already discussed and it's about how you respond to that. So when you are in a place of mind mastery, then you look at the situation and you say, okay, what's right about this? What is right about this that I can use as a growth opportunity? Then I want you to train your body. Now, you know, I used to own a gym. So what I can tell you about this is your mind has a direct impact on how your body functions and your body has a direct impact on how your mind functions. So, and you can find that all over on my YouTube channel. I've got tons of videos on this stuff. So when you're looking to shift your mindset by doing physical exercise, it helps your mindset shift. When you're looking to shift your body and become more fit and more healthy, then it helps to change how you think about yourself because the two are hand in hand. Then you can start to naturally have this sense of having a better handle on your emotions. So the peaks and valleys aren't so peak and valley anymore and you're more leveled out. In fact, when a challenge comes, you look at that challenge and you say to yourself, there's an opportunity in this. I may not know what that opportunity is right now, but I know there's an opportunity in this. And so you approach the challenge from a completely different perspective. Get your routines down. So I have been inching myself back to get up earlier for the last few weeks. And I will admit <laughs> when this first happened, I, wa I slept a lot. There was days that I'd sleep until seven in the morning and I was just processing emotions. So if you're finding yourself wanting to sleep a lot, you're probably processing a lot of emotion. I mean, this is a shock. Let's be honest, this is traumatic and it's a shock to all of us. I mean, just the very notion that this can even happen is a shock, much less living it. So get, I've been dialing my, my calendar back or my, my, my time that I'm, I'm productive to being a little earlier in the morning. And then today I managed to get, uh, I managed to get up at 5.15. So I'm getting up super early and I'm spending that first couple of hours with me. I'm, I'm meditating. I do an energy pull. I write my intentions and goals for the day and the week. And I revisit my strategy. I have some exercise and I get myself showered up and boom, I'm ready. I am ready. I am so ready to change and grow and expand and receive. And when you take that mindset into your business dealings, some pretty phenomenal stuff starts happening. Then I want you to learn to reach further than you've ever reached before. So I reached out to some people over the last couple of weeks and said, hey, you know what? Our company would make a great collaborative partner with your company. 
let's joint venture. So I have three meetings this week with three separate companies on three separate new offerings that we're rolling out. And these are really significant organizations where we'll be able to leverage and be of service and collaborate and joint venture and partner. So those might have been conversations I, I wouldn't have gone for. I don't know. I can't really say for sure because I'm pretty bold, but some people <laughs> kind of hold back, right? And then communication, get your communication down. Be really precise about what you mean. Say what you mean, mean what you say. And if there's ever any confusion around that, just be really cool, you know, be really cool and just be, be gracious and, and figure out what the block is and move through it. Do training on your sales, up-level your sales programs. Like I said earlier, maybe fear-driven selling isn't quite as effective anymore. And now, you, you're, you're being asked to pivot because people aren't responding to a, your old sales strategy. And you, so be willing to rewrite that and then train your people and train yourself and role play and really get comfortable with the new way. So it's not, you're not, you know, clunky about it when you, when you, when you roll it out marketing so marketing is changing and it's relationship driven now there are so many people that i talk to every day that are lonely because we're all quarantined and not everybody has families around them so you know shift your be willing to pivot your marketing strategy to include some deep dives into building really strong relationships with people. It's really important that you have this new curiosity about you. I, would, I just love seeing people reconnect with that little kid in them that is inspired by adventure and enthusiastic about the unknown. I mean, think about what I just said to you inspired by adventure and enthusiastic about the unknown. That'll shift you just entertaining those two concepts. So it's really exciting to see people that are in that place. And if you're not in that place, reframe whatever internal dialogue you have going on about what is taking place in the world right now and make those statements to yourself because that will shift you. It'll shift your energy for sure. A little more on relationships. So number one relationship that you have is the relationship of yourself with yourself. And this is a great time to cultivate a really deep and meaningful relationship with yourself where you trust yourself, you develop your intuition, you take time to acknowledge the, the uh, promptings that you get, the insights, the ideas. Don't discount things, don't write things off. Actually give them value, give them importance, give them attention. And that's something that you can take into your morning routine where you take these ideas and you acknowledge them. You know, I've been really noticing uh, my intuition has just like spiked through the roof. I was, I'm working with the CEO right now of a finance company and we're on the initial steps of a merger. And um, so I suggested to him that he send me some notes on, on a letter he needs to get as drafted. And I sat down on Sunday to remind him to do that twice. And I had my, my email up, and it, but it wasn't the right time. And then I went and, and did some stuff around my house and just did some food prep for the week so I eat healthy. And then it was like, boom, the whole, the whole response, all the paragraphs, all the language patterns, just like poof. I walked over to the computer and I dropped it in like four minutes and it was out the door and he loved it. So 
pay attention to that kind of stuff because that's swimming downstream. That's the ease and the flow. And use LinkedIn. I can't say enough about LinkedIn. LinkedIn is such a powerful, powerful business development tool. You know, one of the things we do is we help people build their LinkedIn and make connections. Like we can connect you with a hundred new CEOs. Um, I want to think about the numbers here, basically on a daily process. And so, you know, over a six day period, you that's 600 additional contacts that then you, you can build relationships with. Are you gonna build relationships with all 600? No, but it expands just by virtue of numbers, it expands your bandwidth. And then if you work your LinkedIn profile and put value added information and posts and whatnot up there, those people are gonna see that. And that is the development of the relationship right there, grassroots, right from the beginning. So build out your relationships, clean up your relationships, especially the one that you have with yourself. Get things right with your team. If you have any clients that are kind of like on the outer fringe of things, get into a conversation with them and find out, just find out how they're doing. You know, you don't have to reach out to sell them something. Just find out like, hey, how you doing? You know, friend to friend. And, you know, be your own hero here. I, this is a big learning right now is what if, what if by going through this crunch economically that this is about you learning to be your own hero and to become your own resource, become your own superhero to, to actually realize that you're a thriver and you bring that into every layer of your business. Just a thought, just want to put that out there. I want you to ponder this. And so rolling down here and then I'm going to put Regal on. So also I want you to take a look at your customer segments. And what we do is we have our clients avatar their customer segments. So look at your dormant, climate clients look at your your past clients your present clients and new possibilities get your avatars really super clear right now you need if you didn't before you really need to know everything about your customer segments you know what they what they watch what they where they prefer to shop online now you know what they're doing to change their own business models. You need to know what's going on with each one of your customer segments so that you can deliver and you can be of service to what their needs are. This is really becoming a customer's um, focused reality. So it's not so much about what you wanna sell, it's about what they want to buy. And that's, that's a pivot point right there. So, um, so that's it for me. I do have a bonus for you guys and, um, I'll give you that quickly. And then I'm going to, I'm going to drop, uh, well, maybe, you know what, Regal, why don't you go? And then I'll save the bonus. I'll save the bonus till last. Perfect. Perfect. Nice. Did you want to do a screen share? Yeah, I do. I do. And um, by the way, I do like bonuses. So we'll see what that bonus is. It's a whopper. Okay, oh. so um, let me see. How did we do this last time? You Are you able, let me take my off. share off, yeah? Yeah. Okay, there you go. Okay, and then let me see if mine works on my end. It says, uh, I think it's disabled on, I think it's disabled, so I think you have to enable it. Well, I should have done that already. And then uh, go along with that. I think Nicole uh, popped the question in regards to yeah. uh, receiving that. So, okay. What was the question? Oh, just uh, if you could just share this webinar with her. Okay. After, yeah. All right. Um, 
Well, there we go. Figured it out. Okay, now try it. There we go. We're okay, good. good. Cool. Yeah, Nicole, I'd be happy to share this with you for sure. All right. So before I share, um, just really quick. So uh, one of the things I'm going to pivot, obviously, from what uh, Deborah was talking about, which, by the way, was very enlightening. Um, good stuff. Uh, I like hearing that. I like being able to use that stuff that you're talking about and uh, enable that into my my thought process. A lot of key points there. So thanks for that, Deborah. Appreciate you're that. You're welcome. Um, so yeah, I'm going to pivot a little bit away from uh, the whole mindset thing and just kind of just go over some more technical stuff, I guess. Uh, one of the things that uh, most business owners, uh, especially small to medium sized uh, business owners, uh, one of the things that they want to always provide for their employees is not only um, to pay them well, but to just overall um, create a culture within their, their companies um, that will uh, provide growth for their employees or just overall put them in a good mindset to, to want to be there. And, and, and by doing that, they were able to pull out that discretionary effort from all their employees by providing this uh, a great place to work. Well, all that, obviously all that comes at a cost, right? So um, whether it's with benefits, whether it's um, from offering uh tuition assistance, a lot of these other things that these employers are paying out of pocket for mm. comes at a cost. And all of a sudden during a crisis, um, well, then that cost becomes is looming. So now they're scrambling to make sure that they're not going to go under and whatnot. So this crisis has just made most business owners just really pivot and um, either look deep inside themselves, save money, cut costs and whatnot. And so by... Um, doing that they're still able to keep their businesses afloat while a lot of them obviously don't have and didn't have um, a safety net and so they're literally they were literally on the verge of sinking and so the government came in and threw a couple of lifelines out and um, it's called uh, the, uh, the the cares act and i will share that with you really quick and what it is is just like i said it's just a quick uh fix, I guess, to help some of these uh, business owners to keep them going under. And uh, as you can see the CARES Act there in the top and what it just stands for, is just the Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Security Act. So I'm going to go through this really quick because there's a lot of information here. I don't want to bore you guys. And a lot of it might not even apply to to most of y'all who are not even in the country, um, but it's still a good um, talk track. So if you are having these conversations anywhere in the world around what the U.S. is doing, it'll kind of give you an idea of, of, of what we're doing on our, on our end. So basically what it is that there's just there's three three components to it uh the uh the ppp or the payment protection or the paycheck protection program the retention tax credit and then the deferral of uh security taxes so basically with the on the the these columns here on the right the uh the tax credit and the uh the deferral those are what uh are known as uh uh payroll costs. So there's a cost on top of what an employer will pay to their employee that they have to pay their employees on top of their compensation. A lot of it is all your payroll taxes, social security taxes, um, benefits. These are costs that are above and beyond what the compensation is. So an employee making say $10 an hour can end up really costing that employer more like $15 an hour when you start adding all this stuff in. Um, <clears throat> so that's where these, uh, uh, reliefs come into play. But the big one that everyone's really talking about right now is uh, the one on the left here, the PPP. So I'm not sure if some of you are all aware or not, but it ran out of money. I mean, it was only in, it, it, I know. And it ran out of money. Just like that thing was like 300 billion. So as of a couple of hours ago, um, I think the, uh, the Congress and the Senate are trying to get something to, uh, together right now. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I think today they're probably going to approve another uh, 500 billion dollars into the program of which 300 billion will be earmarked for this again. And again, that might not even be enough, but um, just some quick highlights there. What it is, is just giving uh, um, a loan, I guess, to employers um, to help keep them afloat, right? And that's, that's all it really is. Um, there are some key components here of what the eligibility is for. 
And um, probably the big one here, less than 500, 500 employees is probably going to be the big one. But there are some caveats that are in here. And again, if you want more information, we can just talk offline um, after this webinar is over. Um, and then, of course, the retention, the tax credit. Basically, what that is, going earlier to what I said about the employee tax taxes that you have that they have to pay for, it just allows them um, a credit. Of course, you pretty much have to be almost going under to even get this. That's what this is for. And the deferral of the Social Security taxes is kind of the same exact thing as that tax credit. But uh, going down here. Um, one of the things about the payroll, uh, the, the PPP, which makes it so uh, appealing, is that they can get this loan and use it for whatever they really, really need. And the thing here is that it has a forgiveness uh, part mm. built into it. So as long as we're meeting these um, bullet points here, the loan, in essence, will be forgiven and they don't even have to pay it back. It's one of the most... Wow. First thing that I've, that's ever been done before. Um, when it comes to helping small and medium-sized businesses. So you can see why it has run out of money so fast. Um, but they're definitely, this is the first time in, in history that the government has really given out this much of a, of a, of a lifeline uh, to business owners. And so that's why they're capitalizing on it, which I would too. Um, one other thing that I wanted to uh, highlight, and then I'll, I'll shut up here, is... Um, totally lost it. I meant to highlight it and it went away. Um, okay, man, I think I lost where I was going to go with this. But anyway, um, with that said, uh, these are constantly changing, uh, constantly changing landscape. And so it's very important that business owners are C-level, um, the C-suite are aware as to what's going on, making sure that they're keeping their business um, afloat, making sure that they're staying most importantly in compliance and most, and I'd probably say last but not least, making sure that their employees are taken care of. Once you, if your employees feel like everything's cool, like I tell my kids, if daddy's not stressing out, that don't stress out. Once you see me stressed out, then maybe you should stress out, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I, I tell a, my kids. I have a question, Rico. So what's does what's applied or is there something separate specifically for self-employed or solopreneurs, entrepreneurs? There is um, something here that they are trying to, because 1099 self-employed, uh, um, the workforce that are self-employed always fall in this gray area, right? They're, yeah. They neither can get relief or they have no way of showing relief. And so it ends up being um, this really funky uh, part for them. And to be quite honest with you, I think they probably need the most help than anybody um, more than, more than your. It seems to be a big gap, you know, I'm curious how, what, kind of um, numbers we have of self-employed people or even, you know, an entrepreneur that maybe has one or two or three people yes. sometimes, you know, that's like no. a, there's probably a ton of people, a huge number of people. No, there are, there are. In fact, um, in this, and I'm trying to find it because it, I think it says it in here somewhere. And if not, maybe I read it elsewhere. Um, but yes, no, they're actually trying to, to make it to where um, those contract employees, right? Yeah. Contract employees, tonight employees, there is some relief for them as well. Um, they they did write, they did write some legislation into this, into the CARES Act for relief on that. But it's such a, a small, mm. a small number that they're not even really honing in on it. But yes, there is a little bit of relief. And when I'm gonna, as soon as I get that, I'll email it to you. You can take a look at that because you're absolutely right. Uh, there are a lot of contract workers that sometimes just kind of fall uh, through the cracks. They really do. Yeah. And so uh, they were able to, to throw some, some, work, some verbiage into this CARES Act that does give a little bit of relief for them. Um, but yeah, as soon as I find that, I'll send that over to you. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah, and I can attach that and send it out to everybody. Absolutely. Absolutely. That'd be good. 
And then last but not least, um, there are other avenues as well that you can actually look at for businesses um, that are trying to maybe get a little bit of funding. One, you know, is always, you know, your VCs, your venture capitalists, your private equity firms, they're always looking, you know, it's a good opportunity to strike while the iron is hot. They're looking to uh, maybe um, invest in a company like that. Um, mm -hmm. And on top of what the federal government is doing on lifelines, don't forget this, some of the states are also doing their own, um, they're doing their own programs as well. So look into your, your respective state to see what, what they're offering on top of what the feds are, are, are doing. And of course you got crowdsourced funding. And the last but not least, you got family, <laughs> you know, yeah. of course that's on that's, that's, you know, whenever there's nothing, no other recourse. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so if you guys want to talk more about this offline, you know, we can shoot me an email, we can maybe talk, do another video conference, just one-on-one, -on -one, um, and um, I'll be available. That's great. But I will shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's really awesome. That's really awesome. Thank you. All right, Christos, let's, uh, let's right. hear from you now. Yeah. Yes, and I will share my screen as well in a couple of minutes, but I'll start with a little bit of talking. And I will uh, start on a follow-up, like doubling down on what Rigo said. I work with uh, technology, a lot of technology companies. And in addition to uh, CARES and PPP that are general uh, funding sources, there is also more technology-specific funding sources, like uh, there is AWS, Amazon has AWS uh, credits, Facebook is giving out some, uh, some grants and they are, of course, they are tailored to technology companies, but there are these avenues as well. If someone is in technology, they can uh, get a credit towards their advertising or their hosting cost. That, of course, is not cash in hand, but it helps with the uh, lower the expenses. Uh, and okay. I'll be happy to send some more information about that uh, later. Now I will pivot back to what Deborah was saying, so then I can hand it off to her for the, you know, um, the, bonus. the little, little <laughs> gift, the little <laughs> gift that everybody's expecting. But I really loved uh, that slide that you showed about training, and uh, a lot of people. Uh, I have these small companies, these founders come to me and say, "Christos, what should I do?" And my answer is, as a founder, and entrepreneur, and a leader of your life and your company you better be doing what you've always been doing, which is you have a strong foundation. You start, you take care of your mind and your body. You have your daily routine that keeps you strong and healthy, right? And then you look at the market, you look at your customers, you assess, you adapt. Now I understand now you woke up one day and you looked at your customers and it was a different world out there. But as an entrepreneur and a founder, you better be sticking to your principles, to your integrity, to your values, and to this foundation that you have built for yourself. And this foundation is the cornerstone for, for everything you do, right? And uh, I understand sometimes you get punched in the face. This is a very big punch. This is not just a punch, this is getting hit by the truck. But guess what? Everybody got punched in the face. And there is also a lot of fear. And so there is also a lot of opportunity for anyone who is able to get over that and go back to their basics, like Deborah said. And really, it's not gonna sound a little bit, uh, you know, questionable, but take advantage of the fear out there. Give people something different. Give people hope, give people inspiration help them out. It's always been about offering value and the way to offer value may have shifted a little bit, but it's still about offering value and there's always ways to offer value. Um, that in terms of uh, just, uh, you know, inspirational talk, I will also share, uh, give me a second. Um, I will share my screen. Let me see, where is this? And it's a little, it's a couple of slides from presentation. And so the idea here, and that is uh, what uh, um, Deborah showed, which is the little equation I use, 
And what I'm, I'm explaining to people, and let me actually let this all roll so you can, you can look at it. Um, this is an opportunity to get into a new market, to come up with a new product, to develop a new idea. It, it sometimes it's just a pivot, but the pivot is so radical that it feels like something new. And the thing to remember here is that just an idea or even just a skill or even just a technology doesn't necessarily make a product something that someone would be willing to use. Uh, it's the idea with the audience and their problem and the solution and the value that we bring to them that creates a product or a service. Uh, and having a product or a service still doesn't mean there is a business here because people must be willing to you know, pay something for it. Mm -hmm. So there is a transition from an idea to a product or service that is valuable to a product or service that can actually make money to actually a business. Uh, and that last piece is super important. Is a lot, a lot of a piece that a lot of people miss, especially solopreneurs or uh, early stage entrepreneurs or first time entrepreneurs or very small companies. Because a business is the purpose of a business is to deliver a product in a consistent and reliable way for its client base, and. Uh, this is where operations, resources, the funding, the human element, the team, they come in, is in, in this reliable and consistent way of delivering the product. Mm -hmm. So this is very important. Um, this uh, little transition from just an idea, a lot of people come up with an idea, they, they would like to do something, but to become a business and become successful, it's all about finding who will benefit from it, if there is money to be made, and then really figuring out how to deliver consistently. And mm -hmm. this, if I can go to this next slide really quickly, this is the equation that Deborah showed at the beginning. So the product plus the market, plus the operation, plus the resources, it's a business idea. It's something that can be brought to the market and hopefully help you grow. Yeah. And you can see some questions at the bottom that you can ask. Uh, about that very good and uh, that's that's about it this would be really key to have when uh going back through your avatars and this also would would uh, have an impact on the business model map and i will stop sharing now yeah all right. Thank, thank you. you. That was awesome. Okay. So here's the bonus and I'm gonna let you guys all go. So do you remember last week? What time? I'm just doing a little time check. Okay. Um, obviously I'm not going to be able to dig into this with great detail, but last week I did promise that this week I would share with you the three energies that you must have in your business. Now I know for some people, even me using the word energy has like, people are like, what, what's she talking about? I thought we were doing like business today. It's like, I understand that there's, there's like a whole new language that's being used in the realm of business. And there are approaches in business that would have been completely, you know, like I would have been shut out if I'd used these words. And I have been, you know, I remember one time I was the keynote speaker at an Epson America conference. And I was talking like I talk now it's, you know, I've always been on this path of awareness of what it takes for things to grow ideas, to grow people, to grow companies, to grow. And, you know, I, I, I thought they were going to throw raw tomatoes at me because <laughs> I was just like, beyond what they had been accustomed to using for language to describe what it was that they were wanting to achieve. And so this may be a little far out for some people. This may be totally in alignment with where you're at. So there's three energies that you need in your business. And it's not about people. It's about energy. So, um, Yes, my YouTube channel, absolutely. I'll do that before I hang up. Um, you could have all of these energies in one person, 
or you could, this could be three separate people or this could be multiple, more than three people. So let me just get back to sharing again. Share my screen. And where's my slide? All right. So here's the three energies that you must have in your business. You need to have creator energy. Creators are the people that are like the visionary. They come up with the idea. They can see where this is going to go. And they can also see what it's going to take in terms of, of connecting the dots so that it can actually turn, go from being an idea in someone's mind to actually being a, a tangible, you know, to use Christo's example, a business that's making money. So your creators are these people that they create things, they come up with ideas, and then they can see the big picture and they can also see the, the smaller chunks, like the, the smaller steps, the, 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 um, the elements that need to get plugged in and put into place for things to be cohesive and to actually turn into um, desired outcomes and goals, et cetera. So creators are critical. Then you have to have a connector because you can create all you want, but if you don't have connectors in your business, then who's going to go out and get the relationships? Who's going to go out and talk to the people? Who's going to go out and, and bring in the warm bodies to get things done, to, to take the product to market, to create, to find the joint venture people, You've got to have the connector and usually really good connectors are, are like fearless, fearless. Like they'll talk to anybody. doesn't matter what they look like, what they drive, you know, where they hang out. They'll talk to anybody. You want to have connector energy in your business because if you don't get your, your business out there and maybe right now is a really excellent time to, to really look at your team and see, you know, who, who are the creators? Who are the connectors? Are my salespeople really, truly connectors? Because if they're not, you know, this is the time of learning to connect to people from the heart, not just going through a pitch deck, like to really connect to people. And then to be able to connect to people, you got to connect to yourself because people can tell if you're just reading a script. People can tell if you're just talking from a PowerPoint. They want human beings and we, we want it now more than ever because we've been, we've been, it's been taken from us, you know? And then you have to have mover. So the mover energy moves the thing along, moves the business along, moves the company along. And yes, can you be all three of these energies? Absolutely. But then there comes a point where you can't do it all. So when you're scaling, when you're growing, when you're expanding your team, your department, your region, your entire organization, you want to be able to identify who's the creator, who are the connectors, who are the movers, and then taking that into your meeting rhythm to make sure the communication is high, high, high and that you're able to bring those ideas and those new offerings to the table and get them to turn into something that is not just sustainable, but something that is scalable. So there you have it. That's, uh, that's my bonus for the day. And um, I wanna thank everybody for being on here. I see we've got a couple of questions. Um, would the connector be my marketing team? I don't know the answer to that because I don't know your marketing team. Um, this is something, you know, maybe I can bring this into next week's webinar where we put these labels on people because these are energies. These aren't roles. People can be in, 
it, it's, it's, it's basically the energy of, of what that person expresses. You know, what's, we all have gifts. And to Christo's point, if there's ever a time in your life to be doing what you really are passionate about and what you really want to do, it's now. Instead of going through the motions of TikTok and doing what you were told you're supposed to do, because if you don't, then you won't, you won't have all the material things. So there's a shift taking place, and I don't have time to go into that today, but to answer Terrell's question, could this be my marketing team? Maybe. It depends on where they're at. And um, yeah, I often feel like I'm all three energies and I need to support those energies. Indeed, you do. And oftentimes, if you're the entrepreneur that launched the business, and I'm sure you see this, Christos, when an entrepreneur comes in and they, they launch a business, they are the creator. But if they don't know how to foster and attract the, these other two energies, the connector and the mover through other people, then that creator can actually be what hamstrings the business. And I see that all the time when they hold the business back. And I'm not saying you're doing that, Terrell, and I'm just saying that only four percent of statistics for you, only 4% of businesses become thriving companies. What's a thriving company? A thriving company is a company that shows on the books 20% growth per year for at least four consecutive years. That's a thriving company. And only 4% ever get to that place. And I really believe that it's because of this. And it's not talked about. Like your, your typical business consultant will never teach you this because they're coming from a left brain, logical minded perspective, and they're not able to engage their right brain enough to, to even see that this is valuable. Or maybe, maybe they'd be um, afraid to actually talk like this because they might lose their clients because their clients are really left brain people. And it doesn't matter right or wrong. It's not, you know, you don't have to be right or left brain. It's about that. How are you bringing it all to the table? And energy is going to be the number one play. So I hope that answered your question. And, um, and you guys all know how to reach me. I'll send out the recording. And uh, someone wanted my YouTube channel. So where is that? There it is. So here's my YouTube channel. This is the tiny URL. So bit.ly, so bit.ly forward slash NEI4, the number four change. And uh, subscribe, hit the bell. And then as I upload new content all the time, then you'll get a little notification that I've popped up a new video. Because I have a bunch of trainings coming out on, for YouTube on how to navigate what's going on right now in terms of your consciousness, your self-awareness, and the assault that this has on your nervous system with all the constant barrage of negative media. So thank you. Thank you, Rigo. This has been fantastic. Yeah, and Christos, thank you for being here today. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you to everybody that attended. All. all right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Next, next Thank you, week, everyone. Yep. Next week, 10 o'clock, Tuesday, share with your friends. And um, I've got to see, I've got some questions here. So I'll stop the recording and I'll take care of those. So thank you so much. Have a Thanks, blessed everyone. day. Bye-bye. Keep moving forward. Yes. <laughs> well said.